There are many great teachers out there. Teachers who have dedicated their lives to protecting the people who need protecting the most. The teacher has the most difficult role in our society because nobody likes attaining true knowledge. True knowledge encompasses all aspects of existence, good and bad. Most others do not. Hearing true knowledge upsets people because it implies that we were wrong at one point in our lives. And another character flaw is our desire to apply absolute truths to unstable foundations in our life. When we do so, we build a structure that we hope will define us best when we're reaching the end of our life on earth. So everything we think we are, everything we tell others we are, everything we base our life-changing decisions off of, is all depending on a foundation that could crumble at any moment. And because we've been told our entire lives that there are certain guidelines and mores we must follow to be a decent human being, we deny everything that may pose a threat to our unstable foundation. This is why we despise true teachers. We lump these teachers into the same category as terrorists, and the method for spotting these teachers and terrorists are just as flimsy and ridiculous as the methods used to spot witches. William Cooper, a loving father and husband, friend of many, simply a teacher trying to better humanity and protect fellow citizens across the globe. They became a mystery to the others, and the priesthood was born. No king ever existed without the permission of the priesthood. The kings never had the power and don't to this day. Kings exist at the whim of the real power which is the priesthood standing behind the throne. It is a method of encoding information through a system of mathematics and numbers. It is some of the most ancient knowledge that man has ever possessed and has been kept secret and given only to those who have proven themselves worthy through the process of initiation. There's a method to their madness. There's really not much method to yours because you're operating from a place of ignorance and until you change that you're going to be bumbling around, bumping into each other, saying and doing the wrong things, not understanding the nature of your en enemy, and if you don't understand the nature of your enemy and the weapons they use, you cannot fight that enemy. You can't fight the battle. You shouldn't even be on the battlefield. Supposedly, a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden took a television camera crew with him went into Osama bin Laden's hideout interviewed him and his top leadership and he came out and told everybody within three weeks Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel now don't you think that's kind of strange folks you see because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world with the biggest budget in the history of the world has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years and can't find him some doofus jerk off reporter with a camera crew bosses right into his hideout and interviews him and I'm telling you be prepared for a major attack but it won't be Osama bin Laden it will be those behind the New World Order. I wonder what Osama bin Laden's targets are supposed to be. And if they don't, you know, if this doesn't materialize in the next two or three weeks, it will eventually materialize because they haven't succeeded in getting the guns out of the hands of the American people, nor have they succeeded in taking our freedoms away. And so I can tell you with a certainty, they must do something terrible in order to stop this backlash and regain the sympathy of the mass herds of sheeple out there. This is how it feels to be alive. This is how it What is our common bond truly? Freedom! Freedom! Without freedom, you can't be a Christian no matter what denomination you belong to. You can't be a Buddhist. You can't own a donut shop. 
You can't drive from here to Oregon. You can't be an American because that's what it's all about. And it's the only thing that it's all about. Nothing else. Nothing else. You know, really understand sometimes what a terrible burden it is to know some of the things that I know and try to wake people up and impart this knowledge to them and find out that they just have walls built in front of them. They want to be slaves. That's why my broadcast scares the hell out of socialists. You see, what happens when you broadcast the truth is you piss everybody off. <laughs> I maintain that the only true salvation from any oppression or enslavement is self-empowerment, knowledge, consciousness. This is true rebellion. Don't get caught up in the 87% of people who follow the leader. People who think that they are rebels because they denounce authority simply because it's the latest fashion. Don't march the streets claiming that you are the enlightened one because you read a book or saw a film that gave you a glimpse into an uncommon knowledge. Don't scream phrases into a megaphone that you borrowed from another person's research. And don't proclaim yourself an original thinker because you belong to a group that represents an unpopular belief. Those are all examples of the other side of the coin of groupthink leading a false rebellion. False rebellion is dangerous because it gives the illusion that you are free and thinking for yourself. A true rebellion, a true revolution, begins when you quit following and start leading. And those who end up following you should be taught by you to quit following you and start leading. And the only way to lead successfully is by fully understanding your rights as a human being on this planet. 